Hello Space Engineers, welcome to this 3 minute tutorial today on conveyors. So first of all we'll go into the toolbar configuration in the G menu and we have a couple of groups here, one for the conveyor systems which is a mixture of large and small grid and then a separate one for the 1x1 one one small grid conveyors. Now the conveyor system allows us to get items from point A to point B and here in this container I've got a package which I want to move to the other container. Unfortunately can't do it because my conveyor system is not working. Working. It's not connected and we can see the yellow light. This indicates that there is a break in the system. Quite obvious this one, an incomplete segment. Uh, still yellow though. Here we have a black light. That means that it's actually damaged. So now we've uh, completed it, fixed all that. Still not working because it's showing a red light. That means there's no power to it. So we'll just turn the batteries on and we're all green. So now we should be able to transfer the package between the containers. And there we go, fantastic. So now we'll have a look at the different components that make up the conveyor group. First up we'll have a look at the large grid versions of the conveyors and to start with we just have a straight conveyor piece. Also we have the elbow followed by the conveyor junction and this allows us to connect or split up several conveyor tubes. Although costing a little bit more in components, a good alternative to the conveyor junction is actually a small cargo container which also has connections on all six sides. Back to the conveyor block group, the final piece is the sorter which I'll do a separate tutorial on but is essentially a one way valve for components. Now there are two types of conveyor connection, the conveyor blocks will plug into both, whereas the one on the right in the cargo container a player can actually access. Moving on to the small grid versions, these are 3 blocks by 3 blocks and we have the standard corner and straight. We also have a frame which is just one block deep, which is the same size as the sorter. Then the small grid conveyor junction has 4 of the 3x3 three three connections on the sides, but also it has a set of 1x1 one one connections, so this acts as a little bit of an adapter to go down to the 1x1 one one blocks. The small grid cargo containers are also good alternatives to conveyor junctions, having a mixture of 3x3 three three and 1x1 one one connections. Moving on to the 1x1s, one there's a conveyor, a straight, a corner and also a sorter. Now one of the important factors when using the small 1x1s one one is you are limited in what components will actually go through. So I've set up a little experiment here. I have one of everything in the first container and I've used some 3x3 three three conveyors with a sorter to train everything into the second container. Then I have an additional 1x1 one one conveyor system with another sorter and we'll see what that manages to get through to the final container. So with the sorter going, let's see how we got on. A few items there too large to go through the 1x1 one one, and some quite critical components here such as the interior plates and the steel. So now we'll have a look at the last container that did allow things through the 1x1 one one. and no surprises there with the ingots and ores going through but I wasn't actually expecting to see any tools. And finally a lot of the functional blocks do have conveyor inputs either for conveyor junctions or to allow player access. Some have multiple ports and often they aren't on the front either so it does pay to have a bit of a look around each side of the block. In the very last block here a connector is technically part of the conveyor group but connectors will be a tutorial for another time. Thanks everybody for watching, hope you enjoyed that, hope to see you again soon.